The Acropolis stands above Athens, crowned with the relics of a civilization which in its time was the greatest in the world. The buildings have been damaged by time and a succession of invaders, but the spirit of ancient Greek civilization permeates the minds of millions who've never heard of Pericles or read Aristotle. The Temple of Victory was built 2,400 years ago. The Turks pulled it down and an Englishman restored it. Modern Greeks have grown up among ruins of buildings commemorating ancient triumphs. They still have the lovely lion carved to honor Alexander's Persian victory. They also have the hideous memorials of the late war and occupation and civil strife. Their struggle lasted nine whole years. Today, the Marshall Plan aims not just to restore Greece to its meager pre-war level on the brink of famine and revolution. It aims to set Greece on the road to mounting prosperity. Without ports and shipping, Greece, the peninsula with its attendant islands, could not survive. To get ships into the shattered ports was one of the first jobs to be done. Greece lost 75% of her ships in the war. American Liberty ships sold at low prices helped to make good the losses. New port equipment was brought in to replace the installations destroyed by war. So in May 1948, began the unloading of martial aid supplies, food, raw materials, and machines. By the end of May 1950, a total of 240 million martial aid dollars had been spent on Greece. Nazis struck Greek transport was the wrecking of the Corinth Canal, which links the Aegean with the Ionian Sea through the Gulf of Corinth. Now, with the help of American engineers, the canal has been reopened. Over one million tons of earth and debris have been shifted, and the walls of stone repaired. Road, rail, and footbridges have been restored ships can now steam through, avoiding the long haul round the Peloponnese. The retreating Germans tore up the railroad tracks and wrecked the locomotives. Anywhere but in the Balkans, they would be regarded as scrap metal. But the Greeks have a genius for improvisation. They've had long training in making the best of a bad thing. And what they can do with a locomotive, which anybody else would consign to the junkyard, is quite remarkable. It's not enough to open up the port. There must be transport to link them with the villages. There are more trains on the tracks now. And once a train starts, it will reach its destination without being held up, shot up, or blown up. Most roads in Greece are tortuous rough and unsuited for cars. But already a thousand miles of highway have been resurfaced. The motor car is starting to compete with the mule and donkey as a way of getting places. It is hard to imagine the task of joining by modern roads thousands of villages scattered thinly through mountain valleys. But unless the villages are linked to markets and to ports, trade will go on stagnating. And the villages. There's nothing so savage as guerrilla fighting and civil war. Villages are burnt out, wrecked, raised. You'd think no one could ever live in them again. And yet, with that curious ability to make do, families go on living there. Chaos has become part of their climate, amid a landscape of ruin. This has happened over and over and over again. This very ability to hang on, to patch up the old, has made survival possible. But if nothing more were done, the same thing would go on happening. 
misery flaring suddenly into revolt and savage reprisal. Even children going off to school have a grave, grown-up look about them. Yet families still have hope and courage. They still work even with bare hands for the things they want. An end to chaos and squalor, a decent, peaceful life. Marshall Plan field men go from village to village, advising on building plans and methods. People in ruined villages who are prepared to rebuild their homes themselves are given materials free of charge. Most materials can be got locally, but the Marshall Plan supplies timber and accessories. Some communities are moving right away from dark, narrow, sickly villages to new sites, healthier and open to the sun. Often the men building their homes are farmers returning to the land. During the Civil War, one in every ten of Greece's seven million people fled from home. A quarter of a million homes were wrecked or badly damaged. Now the families uprooted by war are coming back to their homes and their farms. Even the children are enlisted to help rebuild the schools. Going at this speed, it'll just about be ready for her children. Many Greek houses today are a patchwork. There's a clean new living room, but it leads to a kitchen still old and shabby. The school bells are ringing out again. This school, long occupied by the Greek army, has again become a place for children. The farmers are back in new villages, tending their small flocks. So small, they're almost part of the family. The Greek peasants are among the poorest in Europe. The civilization the Athenians brought to maturity in the 5th century BC has profoundly influenced the Western world. But the Greek peasants are very like their peasant forefathers. All European civilization has given them is the privilege of seeing their land become a battlefield several times each century. Their way of life may seem simple, pastoral, idyllic. But it is also tuberculous, malarial, and undernourished. Methods of farming are appallingly primitive, and so is the system of land tenure. The farm animals are badly bred and underfed. Modern techniques of feeding and breeding are only just beginning to be known. French stallions have been imported through the Marshall Plan to produce better strains of mules, the main Greek pack animal. Imported bulls will also help to build up livestock herds destroyed during the war. Today, thousands of U.S. Army mules are being harnessed to up-to-date plows, and agricultural crops are steadily increasing. To step up the food supply still further, Marshall Plan experts explain the use of modern American farm machinery. Americans, like all Western peoples, have a great debt to pay for the heritage of ancient Greece. They are beginning to repay it by teaching modern Greeks ways of farming which can make their country prosperous again. The fields and vineyards of Greece not only supply the Greeks, but produce wine, grapes, raisins and currants for export. Most important for the farmers, Marshall Aid helps plan water control. Already small dams are being built in the little valleys which follow the country. 
A series of small dams can hold the water, prevent its flooding the plains, and then release it to the fields during the hot summer. To dig the irrigation ditches, an odd combination of labor is used. Manual labor is cheap, for the laborers work on native bread and wine. The mechanical ditch digger works on imported gas and oil, expensive items in Greece today. But the operator is getting valuable experience, and Greece is becoming machine conscious at last. Mechanical skills and technical training are essential if Greece is really to recover. Boys are learning from American technicians tricks of the trade which will mean new hope for this stricken country. Greece is coming up to date. Already the airport and airlines are as shiny and modern and efficient as any in the world. But no matter how hard they work, the Greeks will not have finished the job of reconstruction by 1952 when martial aid ends. But the Athens airport is a symbol of the future. Athens is one of six junctions of the world, and planes of 26 airlines touch down here. down to earth. There lies the symbol of her ancient glory. The debt we owe her artists and philosophers will be repaid when our technicians have helped to make her poorer, richer again. <laughs>